up, my boys? What up, pimps? Today, it's a very special day for us. It's very special. We are going on a fam trip because now we are so famous. We are invited on a trip to North Portugal. And it's a trip that is right up our alley because it's gonna be about food and wine and nature. This time we are not taking the car to Porto. We are taking one of these trains. We're taking the train now to Porto and then we will meet up with Marco, which is the guy who has invited us uh, on this trip. And uh, Marco, he has a video production uh, company called Oh My Media, where we are tagging along with another influencer couple and some journalists. Oh, it's a nice train. Yeah. I thought it was one of those shitty trains. <laughs> oh, I am so glad that this train has air condition. No air condition, really. It's like a sauna. So, on this trip we are going to a region of Portugal that is called Baixo Tamiga and it's a set of small territories and it's actually parts of Portugal that we haven't discovered yet. So we have two nights um, where it's just packed with activities. Today we are getting picked up in Porto and then we're driving to our hotel which is Hotel Monva. It just looks amazing. And um, then we're meeting up with everybody to have some green wine. We're going to a super typical North Portuguese restaurant because all of you have been like, oh, you haven't had real Portuguese food. You have to come to North Portugal. Well, today it's happening. This is why we don't do trains very often. This is why we bought a car so that we didn't have to take the train. <laughs> but despite the heat wave in the train... It's a nice train. Yeah, it's like a premium economy on a plane. Yeah, you have good leg space, you have a good table actually, good size of the table. Hi Marco! <laughs> we made it to Porto! Campania! And we, I'm so glad to be out of the, the train. train. There was like a, a, a lady sitting next to me and she was farting all the time. Mm -hmm. We got limo Let's service! Go. <laughs> we made it to the vineyard! Our first hotel on this trip is Monverde Wine Experience Hotel and it's an absolutely beautiful area we are in. Like the land that they have here is so pretty and they're actually opening 60 more rooms in one and a half months. So this is a very good venue for like weddings and stuff like that if you are into the constitution of marriage. Welcome to our hotel room this is our room and the key is right here but before we show you how beautiful it actually is we are gonna go on a wine tasting <laughs> the company board a couple of years ago and it used to be a winery run by a different another family and they bought this land and they redid everything in order to put their own touch on it and one of the things that is so quirky and beautiful here is this art piece and it's made by a Portuguese artist so here we have 360 different leaves made out of wood and all of them have a different face and a different impression and it represents every day in a year. So it must be 365? Yeah, 65. Perfect. Cheers. Cheers. You already had yours though. Well, they need to pour bigger glasses here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Cheers, Cheers. Amelia. We are having a Loreiro crepe, which is uh, here from Minho Verde. I've learned something already today because we've been calling it green wine all the time. We thought that it was like red wine, white wine, green wine. But green wine is not green wine, it's Vigno Verde. It's a, it's a big offense to say green wine. So from, from now on, we are gonna say Vigno Verde. We're tasting seven wines. For me, it's wine drinking. For Meili, it's wine tasting. So no, 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 we're gonna no, no. take- This one is super good. There's another misconception there is about the Vigno Verde is that it's one particular kind of grape or one grape family, but really it's not. You can have red Vigno Verde. Oh, I didn't know that. It's like Vigno Alentejo, Vigno Verde. That's how you remember it. It's just an area. God damn it, this is educational. Cheers and that. Right here in the middle of the table, a sub two subregions meet each other. You have Amarante, that part of the table, and then you have Zusa. So one of the things that characterize this area with all its subregions, subregions is actually that there are so many different microclimates here that you can actually grow a bunch of different stuff here and then still grow it organically and natural. So if you are foodie or if you love wine, this is a region that is worth going to. And this tour here is described as an inno gastronomic tour which means i had to google this uh, word the meaning ino gastronomia means the study or appreciation of food and wine and basically we're phd in ino uh, gastronomia we found out because we have been appreciating food and wine since we were born It's the first time for everything and today we are going to try two things for the first time. These are sardinhas. We are now ready to file for Portuguese citizenship <laughs> because we like sardinhas. This is the uh, conclusive uh, example on our um, almost year-long ignorance in terms of green wine because this is red green wine. And that doesn't really make any sense, does it? Jon, you cannot call it, it was green I, wine. Amelia, green wine is Amelia, a dead word. It's Amelia, a dead I just... word. Mm. Mm. Oh, this could be my new favorite region. It's too late. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> now it's dinner time, I think. Am I right, Jon? I think you're right. Where are we going, Marco? Amarant. Amarant. Marco is the reason that we are here today. I feel like we, we, this is the biggest honor we've had as YouTubers. Get, getting invited on a trip like this because um, for 200 videos, no one cared about us. Ooh. So apparently Amarant is a very, very charming city. It's old, charming buildings. You don't see the modern atrocities. And you have a little channel running through like we're in Rome. So the reason why you see all these lights here is because it has a festival. Tomorrow it starts, so we're a day early. It's called Festas de Jun. People are going bananas, drinking, you know. Not this year because we can't. Today and tomorrow it's about Eno Gastronomia. But one thing I want to say is that after we've done these food tours around Lisbon and even Madeira, both me and Amelia have 
just fell in love with Portuguese food on a level so high that we don't feel the need to go on these fine dine Michelin restaurants uh, as we used to do all the time. It's like it's much more fun for us now to dive into the Portuguese food culture and then find gems again and again because there are so many. That's what we're gonna do now. Let's go. Uh oh. What's a venue? We are starting with a table full of delicious traditional appetizers here at this restaurant. So we have bacalao, we have chorizo, we have cocomelos from queso y... How do you say ham? And last but not least, we have the pastel de bacalao. And this is what I'm most excited for. And it's without cheese, we learned. It's sin queso. Go, get it. That's, that's, the, that's the expression I want to see. This is doubtless the best one we have had ever. And do you know why? Because they are smaller and they are also um, cold. Now we are finally in the middle of nowhere in northern Portugal. This is where so many of you guys have said like, uh, this is the only place you get real Portuguese food because apparently food in Lisbon is not real Portuguese food because and there's many tourists there you know this it's so overpriced you don't you don't get the real experience now we're here mm. you can feel the real Portugal in this food super de legumes legumes this is very common to uh, have a little uh, little taste of this before you go to the main dish what is my little movie star thinking? This bacalao is fried in olive oil and this is just another example on the saying that Portuguese can do bacalao in 1000 different ways. We tried to ask what kind of bacalao is this? Is it bacalao a bras or is it whatever? But is bacalao a seda calzada? Which is the way they make it at this restaurant. Oh, it's fried cheese on top, and then you just got a monster, like this fish. It's a badass. It was a badass fish. I'm gonna dig in now, and then I'll give you the verdict. That's what she said. <laughs> I've learned from Gordon Ramsay that you have to try everything on the plate because that's how the chef meant you to taste it. Mm. This is the most salty one we have had, but it's also the most flavorsome that we have had. This is just for me, Owen. You gotta find your own dessert. This was the dessert table we just robbed, and I've never seen anything like this, Amelia. So it's Portuguese dessert, but not the tiramisu because that's Italian. Right. And Portuguese. Okay, okay, okay. It's made here. <laughs> Everything is invented in Portugal. Oh, yeah, I, I tend you to know forget. That. I know that. I forget it. <laughs> mm, it's a maca cake. So, what we're looking for here is something that is absolutely dazzling, right? Um, mm. This is better than the Italian tiramisu. It's a dazzling. Mm. Yeah. If I didn't have to taste everything, I would finish this. <laughs> It's dazzling. So now we're doing this. Uh, <laughs> it's like eating flubber. If you remember that movie, <laughs> this is flubber. <laughs> this wasn't dazzling. It was pretty good. This one looks like raspberry. It's it's close to dazzling, but it's not entirely dazzling. <laughs> I'm gonna have another bite of this. I don't care. This is really good. Should I eat it like a pizza? Yeah. So I didn't expect to like this, but it's really good. It's a dazzling. Yeah. It's like a, a pulo follado, and then it has cream, and then it has ananas. So it's not too sweet. It's kind of fresh. It's this is this is my favorite. It's super good. It's not super good, I'm oh, It's good. So this is the last one. This is more Brazilian than Portuguese. 
Ging ding. Ging ding ding. Ging ging ding. I'm not hooked. It's maybe it's because it's from Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> but overall, a very dazzling experience. No more sugar, I made it. Real food from real Portugal, as they say. But it was delicious, really good. I feel like the bacalao from the south tastes like the bacalao from the north. Mais ou menos. But this was real bacalao. From real Norway. Deixem aí nos comentários, beleza? Aí eu vou mostrar para vocês uns colegas nossos aqui que a gente conheceu. Esse aqui é o John. John, como está o seu português? Já. O... É, eu falo português muito bom. Nuno, you have a vlog. Together. We also have a vlog. This is, this is my lovely wife, Erika. What kind of video do you do exactly? Uh, we live in Vila do Conde and we focus on cultural things, nice places to visit here in Portugal. Very similar. We're like a, a Portuguese version of Stay Classy Vlog. Parecido, okay. Bem parecido. Like so, with, with a Brazilian taste. There's, there's uh, another YouTube team we have to introduce. Yes, and they are also Brazilian. <laughs> also living in Portugal. Hey! Hello, guys. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's so, uh, o garoto uh, <laughs> Regi Regis Regis and Clarissa. Clarissa. We are a Hollywood channel. Yes. We are from Brazil, and we live in, in Portugal. Uh, one year. We making uh, videos uh, about uh, Portugal, uh, travel vloggers, and with a uh, cinematic style <laughs> like that. If you don't speak Portuguese, don't worry because you can turn on subtitle and enjoy. Inscreva-se no canal. And we're gonna see more to these guys the next couple of days. So uh, yeah. yeah, now it's bedtime, and we're showing the house tour tomorrow because it's very late. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Remember to subscribe, like, and hit the ding dong. You know the shebang <laughs> and. Uh, Até logo. Até logo. Até logo. Até logo. <laughs> tchau, tchau. É pra tchau.